Hello and welcome to Chinivision. This time, another foray into portable computing. A couple of weeks ago, we looked at the Amstrad PPC 640, one of Amstrad's first attempts, or first attempt indeed, at a portable computer, the PPC 512 and 640. MS-DOS compatible, um, runs uh, an NEC V30 processor inside. But how did portable computing develop and how did we end up with smartphones in our pockets? And well, the answer is that we actually had much smaller computers than this, personal organizers. Originally the Scion organizer, a um, little kind of uh, thing I'm gonna show on the screen there that you can see how didn't even have a QWERTY keyboard. But a few years later, and this turned up the other day, um, actually, I'm actually going to put this out straight out of the way. Uh, actually, it's so big. I'm going to put the Amstrad on the floor because it's so big that you can't avoid. There we go. Right. So this nifty little thing arrived in the post the other day. It is a Scion 3A personal organizer. This is a nice little leather case that came with it. It's going to take that out of the way. Now, if you haven't seen one of these before, this is the follow-up to the Scion 3. The Scion 3 came out in 1991. This model came out in 1993. And it, they all were uh, very, very small. You can see that I actually can put a Game Boy in there just to see. Uh, you can see for comparison. Just going to put that on top there. That's about, that's about the size compared to a Game Boy. And you all know the size of a Game Boy. So let's pop that over there. And it's a marvellous uh, piece of miniaturization. To give you an idea of, of how small this is, this is on that piece of uh, foam there, a Intel, actually an AMD 8086, which is essentially the same as the NEC V30 processor inside this unit. I'm running at the same speed. And just look at how big that chip is compared to this computer, it's absolutely marvellous how they've managed to miniaturise all this down. The 3 Series originally came out in 1991. They made their way right the way through until 1998 when they were replaced by the Series 5. Acorn also put a version of this out. Uh, they called it the Pocketbook, um, but it was in fact just a, a Scion with rebadged uh, markings on the case. It does have this remarkable hinge mechanism, so we fold that down there. It's actually, just notice, still got the protective uh, plastic on there. So it just folds, I'm trying to do this from an angle, folds out like that, and you can see it just, such a neat little clamshell design. So it can just fit in your pocket. And just, it's incredibly small. Two AA batteries in there powering the thing. Speaker on the back. Expansion uh, port there, and also another expansion port on the other side. If you can see that there, that's actually got a one megabyte uh, flash card in their solid state disk, which we'll have a look at a little bit later on. Get that back in shot there nicely. Has a keyboard on it, full QWERTY keyboard as you can see. Um, it's quite a, it's a little bit, the keys are solid plastic, but there's clearly a rubber membrane or something underneath there. It, it, it's a step up from calculator keys. You can type on it okay. Um, and then you've got these little buttons along here at the top that can activate the, that almost looks like an LCD display. It's made, the icons are designed to match the LCD, but um, they are in fact buttons that can activate the applications. To turn it on, you just press the bottom key there and on, and on it goes, and it's crashed. This looks fairly <laughs> fatal. Oh dear. Is that a ribbon connection given out? Is something given out in here? <laughs> the 
this was the problem with uh, these. <laughs> if the hinges on these things didn't break, which they did because I had one of these and it went back under warranty a couple of times, the um, if the hinges didn't get you and they'd snap right across, then the ribbon connector between the screen and the main unit would. And what we've got here is a failure of the ribbon connector. Um, so what I'm going to do is, it does still work under certain angles. So when we come to show the screen, I'm going to do some very precise uh, maneuvering to show the screen to you, I think. Anyway, um, this aside, because I, I can't really bought this now because it's taken so long to set up and get hold of I mean, these things. It's taken about five attempts on eBay to buy one of these, so we're going to persist. So, um, this is a two megabyte unit, I'm going to turn it off. Um, and yeah, they're, they're very portable, very nice. Um, you go on the side here, there is a serial cable connector there, which plugs into your PC um, using a good old fashioned serial lead um, here. That's the sign in there, and that goes into your PC, either the full size or the, um, the smaller connector, which I used to connect mine in with. And it also came with some software as well. And I got this extra solid state disc in with mine, which I can store programs on. The Scion has, I'm not going to open it up because I'm <laughs> trying to preserve that cable, has volatile memory in it. Um, two meg in this case. It's kept in place by the batteries and a lithium cell that goes in there, if you can see that. Um, so that retains the battery when you take the main AA batteries out. You get about 35 hours to 40 hours of use on one of these, on two AAs, which is incredibly good for the day. And I'm just looking at Wikipedia here, just about details of the thing. And it does, yes, it talks about the cable between the keyboard and the screen breaking down. We're going to persist and we're going to try, I'm going to try and get this thing working um, and show you guys, and it's going to be a bit of a funny angle. We're going to try and get it up and running just to show some software. And certainly the cards go in, nice little design touch here, put the cards in, put the cards in the right way. Card goes in like that, push it in. When you come to take it out again, it, the, uh, that helps pull it out. So it doesn't need to be, you don't need to be scrabbling around because, and there you go. So what I've managed to do is prop this up between a Game Boy and something else so you can see, hopefully this is gonna work because one nudge of this and it's all gonna go wrong. So you've got the built-in applications here. So there's a database, a word processor, a gender app, a time app, a world a clock application, calculator, spreadsheet, spell checker, which only comes on the uh, more powerful versions. My, my own version was 256K and it didn't have that. And a game of patience as well, and a, a note recording app there. Just use those, and I can't press, you, to activate those main applications, you can press those buttons that we saw earlier. Can't do that at the moment because they're halfway folded out. This is faintly ridiculous, but I don't think this is gonna ever work properly again, to be honest. So press menu and you get a menu system up. There's very nice uh, menu system there, like, like you see on a PC software. Uh, this is all Asan's own proprietary operating system. You can load in applications, so we can try and install an app that I should have on my A drive. So go internal, uh, B drive, sorry. I can go to there, which should be a game uh, called Fairway. Press enter. And Fairway has now installed, and that's gone down there, so right at the end, so we can press enter and that, that game will load up. You could also buy games on cards that you can plug in, including Horace in the Mystic Woods, which has only just been converted to the Spectrum in actual fact. I just, we'll quickly look, before we look at the other stuff, we look at some of the built-in applications. There's a word processor there, very nice. I used to use this to take notes at sixth form, actually, 
It's a de decent word processor, um, usual copy and paste and all sorts of fine text, fine replace, word, word counts. Um, you can do various fonts on there. I'm nothing too exciting, just some basic fonts. And various things you can even print out from it. If you've got the special cable, you can print directly out from it. So it's, it's all very nice. The agenda app works exactly as you'd expect. The I haven't set the clock and said things since Sunday, the 4th of July, 1993. You can set your appointments in the agenda. Um, works very nicely. Just come out of that. Uh, the operating system is multitasking as well. So, um, as you'd expect, uh, background tasks can run. When you accept, exit applications, they're still there and in memory and running. Time application is what used to wake me up every morning when I had my Scion. You can set all your alarms exactly like you get on your iPhone these days. You can set various alarms. Um, again, it thinks it's Sunday the 4th of July. I'll just come out of that. You can press system to get out of these things, except again, I don't want to press that button down there because it's going to set this screen off. How do I get it off here? Oh, I can't without pressing system. This is right. Very gently. There we go. Right. The screen is 480 by 160 and monochrome. It's actually a very, very nice screen. I was going to run it alongside the Game Boy um, to show the difference in quality because this is a really nice screen. It's, it almost looks, it's not like the Kindle display, except it is almost as readable as the Kindle display. It's very, very nice, especially for something dating from 1993. I was going to run it alongside the Game Boy screen to show you um, the quality you're looking at, but the Game Boy is currently propping up the Scion so that you can see the screen. World map feature was always fun, worth wasting time when you're in lectures and things like that. Um, you set you can you can set where you are in the world and it'll tell you how far away you are. So if we're in Denmark, um, I, can't, I can't see the screen. I can't see the screen properly from here, but it's actually not the, the angle on this thing isn't too bad. Um, when I was doing the Amstrad PC, PC the other week, um, I couldn't see the screen from my position over here, but actually I can I can see the graphics. I just can't read these this text too well. So from I think it says Zacapoco, Mexico. Gives you a dialing code and gives you the distance from London. I've set my location as London Inner. Well, I haven't actually. That's the default. Um, it tells you it's 5,723 5, miles and gives you the dialing codes there. Gives you sunrise and sunset times as well. So um, all very nice. And again, can I get out of this? And you can also change all the details as well if you want to in there. If dialing codes change. Calculator. Very basic. Um, you type in your sum, and I, again, I can't really access it properly, but um, you type in your sums and it can do it. It's a full scientific calculator from what I remember. Usually this wouldn't be a problem, but again, I've got to press the system button to get out. And I'll just, I'll just demonstrate this. You can press the spreadsheet button there. And that happens. <laughs> That wasn't supposed to happen. Let's get there. Well, I won't press the spreadsheet button um, on my knackered Scion. I was hoping to sell this after it was done. <laughs> that ain't happening, is it? Um, very nice spreadsheet application. Um, you can type in all every, everything you'd usually expect. And there's, there's graphing as well in here. Um, and you can get in, you can link it to the database. It's it's very nice. It's it's a full office suite on the move, so you can't really complain too much. I say it's got graphing, I think it, it must have graphing, I think it does, because it displays graphing on there. Spell checker, um, which I say, I had the 256K model of this, didn't have that built into the smaller models. What I found with the 256K version was that you were always short of space in terms of memory. Um, 256, the base model, I think, was 128K, um, which would have been really tight. I had 256K and I had a few games like Manic Miner and things installed. And with a few documents, you soon ran out of memory. Um, well, they, you could be surprised how much you could actually type into the thing before it ran out. A game of Patience and a record app um, where you can record audio. We can try and do that. Right. Testing, testing, one, two. 
and that doesn't work. Possibly related to the screen fault. I don't know. Perhaps the microphone's on the same cable. Just come out of that. So you can download software onto this. Um, you can buy software, in fact, at the time. And what you do is you act, go into the menus, you activate the serial link in oh, a remote link there. You activate that, turn it to on. You plug your Scion lead in. Um, you install the software. And then you have a bit of a faff around with COM ports because anybody who remembers serial connections knows that you end up having a little bit of a faff around watching the computer say, no, I can't see anything. And when it, once you get it working and you know what your settings are and what everything needs to be, then it's fine. And actually, the Scion software that I, I've now got, the latest version, is much better than the version I was using um, when I got my Scion. At the, it was uh, end of 94, um, I got my Scion. Um, and that, the software back then was dreadful. I ended up using Terminal in Windows to do all my transfers because the Scion software was so bad. They've updated it since, and now effectively it's drag and drop. Um, you actually see all the folders on the side and over the serial link, you can just drag and drop your files. It does take forever um, to transfer the files. 19,200 board is the speed. So that's well under even your first, actually my first dial-up modem was 14.4K, so yeah. But those of you started on 28K modems, yeah, this thing is slow to transfer, even with those really tiny little programs. So I've installed one bit of software onto it. It's a golf game that's free of charge. Free of charge at shareware. So uh, press enter there. Unregistered copy. This is shareware, not free software. If you continue to play Fairway 24, you must register. I hope he doesn't see this. Registration removes this screen as simple as typing in a special key code. No need to reinstall. Send a £12 check or cash to blah, 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 blah. Uh, checks in the post, mate. Unregistered. Ooh, he's, he's big on the nag screens here. Unregistered the copy. You can register electronically with CompuServe. <laughs> Go SW Reg and use ID 6566. Or we, or we can go on the internet, as opposed to CompuServe. With our credit cards, oh yeah. Uh, I'm not playing this game, I'm just going to... I'm not going to play this game again, I'm just going to show it, so I don't think I need to play the share it, even if he still does live there. Right, okay, so we've got one player in tournament, player one, player two, just want to see what the screen looks like on this, really. Um, yeah, whatever. Welcome to round one. Hole one, length, two, three, five yards. Oh, right now, can we select a... Ah, oh, that changes the aim. The refresh rate on the screen isn't too bad, especially with how blurry the Amstrad was. It's not great, but it, it's so deep. The thing you look at this screen is actually the pixels are relatively small for the size. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, right, I'm right over here, um, probably two, three sound widths away from the screen, and I can still relatively see the screen okay i can't read some of that smaller text um if i come across you get about a 45 degree angle and you're absolutely fine i mean it's, it's a real marvel actually after all these rubbish screens i've been looking at um it's uh quite impressive right what do we do oh just to see the air and it's a fast little 16-bit processor it is, it is an nec v30 um, my ball lies in the long grass. I'll give it one more go. Need the spoke? No. Oh no, no. We've got lines on the screen again. Uh. How's that looking from you, you guys? Point of view. I'm so sorry about this. This was this video has been so long in the planning. It's taken me so long to get hold of a scion. Did all the testing, installed all the software, and then had to take the batteries out earlier when I, when the lines came on the screen. <laughs> Just 
um, installing all the Cywin software, getting it on a Windows XP PC. It's been a, this one's been a long time, so I'm, I am persisting with this because I don't think this sign's ever going to work properly again. If anyone knows a way to fix that ribbon connector, that an idiot can do it, um, please let me know. So let's come out of that. So that's a, it's quite a neat, neat little game. Oh dear. No, no, no. This. Let's exit that. Oh dear. I'm going to install some different software and install here. Right. B drive. And I've got a game called Rocky. I think it's going to be yeah, rock full. I think we all know where that's going to be, don't we? There we go, press enter to stop. And yeah, you collect the uh, diamonds without pressing too hardly on without pressing too hard on the scion so it doesn't fall over and yeah, this is all. I mean, these are homebrew titles. Or no one knew what homebrew title was. PD games, um, because the 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 game the Game Boy, <laughs> because the Scion has its own programming language built in called OPL. Uh, no, I can't do that without. No, I'm dead. You have died. Two lives left. Um, the Scion has its own programming language built in. Quick game. Yes. And you can see it along here. OPL programming language. So all these bits of software programmed in this OPL language that's built into the Scion. Um, so people could easily write programs, transfer them off using the serial lead and then put them online to distribute. Indeed, I couldn't find it, but there was a quite superb port of Manic Miner that I used to have on my own Scion 3A. So that's a quick look at the Scion 3A. Um, bit of a disjointed view because I didn't expect the unit to break halfway through the video. But that does somewhat highlight the problems with these unit because these units were a bit fragile to begin with, with the hinges and the ribbon connectors. And 22 years later, these things are going to be even more fragile when you buy them. I'm afraid the problem with the Series 3 is it's not if it will break, it's when. I can tell you my unit went back many times under warranty and many times after that in the two, two and a half years I used it because with me, every time it was broken hinges. I don't recall having lines on the screen, but the hinges would snap. And, and that's the problem with the thing. It's just so fragile. You can hear it. If I hold it to the microphone, so I open and close it. It's so creaking that that's got worse now. You can see the state of that screen now. It's absolutely ridiculous. It is breaking as I'm using it. And I mean, look at that now. That's, you know, um, what's the point of fighting over one of these on eBay and paying silly money? Some people are when it's going to be broken. It will break, I'm afraid, unless it's had no use at all. But even then, the plastic's going to be brittle. Um... But these, back in the day, were really nice units. You could put it in your pocket. It was so light and easy. Just put it away. Look, that weighs nothing at all. Running on two AA batteries. And you could type in that to your heart's content anywhere. With incredible battery life. And the batteries, of course, were so easy to, to get hold of as well. Two AAs for 35 to 40 hours. Absolutely amazing. As a collectible today, yeah, as an object to look at, I suppose you can still get that out and have a look at it, but unless I can repair that somehow, then it's absolutely useless to me. Um, bit of a shame. I'm afraid it's also the same story for the other Scions, the Scion 5. And again, an incredibly nice unit to look at, um, but the hinges explode. My Scion 5, the hinge exploded in the middle of a lecture. Um, the metal parts flew everywhere, bits of plastic flew everywhere, just as I folded it out. 
and that was practically new. I think it was just, I say practically new, it was just out of warranty. And I looked at the cost of repairs and thought, no. Um, I would have been better off buying an Amstrad NC150 or something like that because it didn't have all the problems of Scion and their hinges. Overall, the Scion 3A is a marvel of miniaturization. That kind of processing power there, down into a computing unit, that side, built-in applications, everything you ever need, built into it. Word processor, spreadsheet, database, agenda, and everything else in a programming language, and you could download stuff from the internet and install it on it. But today, I'm afraid, yeah, if the one you buy isn't already broken, the one you buy is going to break.